Every three months, we get to look inside of some super investors portfolio, the buying activity, the selling activity as well. Fortunately, there's no really commentary on that. So the commentary, we just have to make our own. Now, I do want to start off with Stanley Druckenmiller, and then we're going to have a look at the six that you've seen in the thumbnail. Now, Stanley Druckenmiller here has $3.72 billion assets under management and 72 holdings. Of course, I'm not going to go over all of the 72, but as you can see here, those are the, let's say, the biggest changes. So Microsoft still is the number one position in that portfolio at 12.57%, did add a little bit during that quarter sold 71.5% of the NVIDIA position. It still is 4.27% of the portfolio, but NVIDIA, if we go here to the options holding, you can see that NVIDIA, a large part of the whole option call has been sold. If we look at the biggest additions to the quarter, the one where the change is over 100%, that's at ZoomInfo, Flex, Freeport, Woodwork, Marvel Technology, Natera, Palo Alto Networks. The new companies that he added to the portfolio are Coherent, Discover, Kinder Morgan, Waptech, Meta Platforms, Key Corp, Citigroup, Madison Square Garden, Apple, Cinemark, Palantir Technologies. Palantir Technologies, don't get too excited, it's just 0.48% of the portfolio. Stellantis, Capital One, and some others that I have no idea what they do besides here Reddit. With regards to the top five of the portfolio, like we've said before, Microsoft number one, Coupang number two, Tech Resources number three, that was also reduced by 17.6%, Vistra Corp down 4.91%, Natera Inc. 4.74%, NVIDIA 4.27%, Coherent, the new position is already in the top 10 at 4.11%. Quite interesting choices of companies, of course, that top five did not really change much quarter over quarter. Now, before continuing and looking at the other six that you've seen on the thumbnail, if you enjoyed this type of video, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, we we'll really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So first up, I want to start off with Daniel Loeb from Third Point. This is the portfolio value that is the lowest out of the next five, still is over $7.77 billion, has 38 stocks in that portfolio. So as you can see, he also added a couple of new companies in the portfolio, but also completely sold out of some others. For example, United States Steel, the others here I've never heard of, did reduce 50% of Uber and 12.41% in Microsoft. The new companies that were added in the portfolio are Google, Alphabet, S&P Global, Advanced Auto Parts, which we've also seen this in yesterday's video, Marvel Technology, Goldman Sachs, Cinemark Holdings, Gartner, and Patterson. The biggest additions are in Intercontinental Exchange, added 42.86%, Amazon by 21.43%, Meta 6.55%, and then some of the others there as well. If we look at the top five, let's say top 10 positions, number one is still pg and &E at 12.47%, Amazon is number two, Microsoft number three, Bet and Body Works number four, Meta Platform number five, Danaher Corp number six, number seven is the new company, which is Alphabet for this quarter, then you've got Vistra, American International Group and Jacobs Solutions. If we scroll down, we can see by sector, 18% basically technology, 17.4% utilities and 16.46% consumer discretionary. So there's nothing really that surprises me from this portfolio and the activity. Moving on to super investor number two, and I did make a mistake because David Tepper from Appaloosa Management, we did talk about his portfolio a couple of weeks ago. The portfolio value is actually a bit lower than Daniel Loeb. It's at $6.69 billion, has 38 stocks in that portfolio. And so if we go and look at the activity here, also some new companies, but he did reduce quite a lot in his existing one and completely sold out of what around six, seven companies or so. So he as well has reduced quite a lot in Uber, 77.33%, 44% Nvidia, 39% reduction in Meta, 18.9% in AMD, close to that as well with regards to Intel, and Microsoft, close to 10% from Alphabet and 3% in Amazon and only 1% reduction in Qualcomm. Quite surprising there. New companies in the portfolio are Adobe, iShares China Large Cap ETF, JD, 
Boeing, Lyft, and Crane's share. I mean, we've seen the super investors across the board invest quite a lot in Chinese companies. I mean, if you can look at the major additions in that quarter, Baidu number one, Pinduoduo number two, Alibaba number three. I mean, the trend here is pretty clear. They see a lot of value in those companies. Oracle number four, UPS number five, Caesars Entertainment added 2.22%. And so if we go and look at the top 10, the number one, not surprising really, Alibaba Holdings, 12.17%, Amazon number two, then you've got Microsoft, Meta, NVIDIA, Alphabet, AMD, Oracle, then the Chinese one, Pinduoduo, and Baidu. So I'm not surprised because I've already seen this portfolio last quarter, so I'm not surprised with the holdings here. But yeah, now Alibaba is the clear number one. It's, I mean, the trend is pretty clear. We've been talking about that on the channel while covering Alibaba, when covering Pinduoduo. There is a lot of value. There is a lot of value. Of course, there is the China risk. But I mean, if all these billionaire investors move some of their funds into those stocks, and it's not like it's 1% of the portfolio. No, it's, it's top 10 positions in those portfolio. Maybe they know something we don't. I don't know, remains to be seen. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Up next, we've got an investor that has been in the headlines quite a lot in the last year or so for good reasons, I would say. And that's Nelson Pels from Trine Fund Management. You know him from the battle versus Disney. So the portfolio value is just over $8 billion. Number of stocks, just nine. And here we can directly stick to this page right here. Disney still the biggest position of the portfolio, almost 50% of it. He did reduce 40% in Ferguson PLC and 19.9% in Allstate Corp. Now you might say, why does he still have that much in Disney, even though he lost the battle? In my opinion, he lost the battle. I don't think he's ready to admit that he lost the war. Moving on to another famous one, and that's Bill Ackman from Pershing Square Capital. Seven stocks in the portfolio, portfolio value of over $10.7 billion. And here as well, pretty simple. He reduced his stake in Chipotle by 9.82%. It still is 20% of the portfolio. Then you might say, oh, where is Alphabet? Why is it only in the fourth position? Well, there is Alphabet with ticker symbol G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, and then there is G-O-O-G-L. So put that together and it's close to being the number one position in the portfolio. But I do want to say that he now completely sold out of lows. We know that last quarter he already reduced that stake by around 82%, and now he completely sold out of it. That's quite interesting because, as you can see, even beforehand, even before the 82%, he has been reducing that position close to, what, the last three quarters or so. So... Yeah, I would love to hear the reasoning behind that and why there is no new position and why it didn't really add in the first quarter. Quite interesting because, I mean, those positions, I think, have done quite well, especially Alphabet, right? Chipotle as well. This thing keeps on going up and up and up. I guess people... I've never eaten there, but I guess it works. It works, but yeah, remains to be seen. I would be surprised if in the next quarter we don't see here something new or at least him adding to one of these positions. Moving on to the next one, also pretty boring, I would say, Carl Econ, Econ Capital Management, 14 stocks in the portfolio, portfolio value of close to $12 billion. And the activity here, we've got two complete sellouts in First Energy Corp and Newell Brands, two new positions as well, CVR Partner and JetBlue Airways. And he added, well, he added quite a lot, 481% in international flavors and fragrances. I mean, that's one hell of a name. I should say that. That's one hell of a name, or you, should, you could just call it IFF. Just an FYR, of course, with JetBlue, Carl Ikan also won two seats on the board of JetBlue Airways. So this is the overall portfolio. Number one, 52.51% is Ikan Enterprises. Number two here, CVR Energy at close to 20%. And then you've got or the rest. So basically, yes, he likes financials, materials, that's already two-thirds of the portfolio, even a bit more, and then utility and energy. Moving on and going a bit higher, I mean quite higher, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust, 24 stocks in the portfolio, a portfolio value of over $45 billion. And here we only have a small reduction in Microsoft, 4.48%, and Berkshire Hathaway, 13.12%. But, of course, 
Microsoft still the largest position in the portfolio at 33.49%, Waste Management 16.38%, Berkshire Hathaway still at 15.87%, Canadian National Railway 15.75%, and then we've got Caterpillar, or Caterpillar, Deer Co, Ecolab, Coca-Cola, FEMSA, which is the packaging one, I believe, Walmart, FedEx, and all the rest are quite small. I would love to know if some of you do own railways. In this case, we have your Canadian National Railway. I've seen Canadian Pacific Kansas as well in many, many portfolios. It's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting business. And I mean, if these types of people have these types of stocks in the portfolio, those must be good for cash flow. And their performance have probably been quite well over the years. But of course, do let me know down in the comment section below. And so the last one, the end, as always, the biggest one, and that's Warren Buffett, or shall I say Berkshire Hathaway. Number of stocks, 41, portfolio value of over $331 billion. So what has happened? I mean, I think you know already what has happened. So completely sold out of HP, in this case, ticker symbol HPQ, Reduced Paramount Global by 88.11%, admitted that it was a mistake, Netflix is the king in streaming. Reduced Apple by 12.83%, Sirius XM by 8.85%, but rest assured he did add quite a lot to the other Liberty Sirius XM Series A and C. And reduced Chevron by 2.47%. And a new company that has been added to the portfolio, yes, in my opinion, it's quite quite a strange thing, quite a strange deal. It's Chubb Limited, it's it's insurance. <laughs> big, big surprise, right? It's insurance. But that, that's the new position that has been a secret position, right? A lot of people were talking, is it Tesla? Is it Disney? Is it PayPal? Is, is it something else? No, it's Chubb Limited. It's a position that has been added to the portfolio as a new position in Q3 of 2023, but it had to remain secret because they wanted to build their position and they did not want the market to know that it was Chubb Limited because if it knew, like we've seen right now, now it knows, the stock went up. How is that even legal? That just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, okay, I also want to buy stocks without it going up because people would know that Couch Investor is buying the stock. How does that even make any sense? In my opinion, it does not make sense. I mean, you've got Roaring Kitties that got an investigation because he talks about a stock that he likes, but that might be illegal. But this asking permission to keep it a secret, not showing in the 13F filings, how is that even normal? And then, of course, you've got politicians that are trading, insider trading. But then again, what can you do about it, right? And so looking at the overall portfolio, Apple still 40.81% of the portfolio. Then you've got Bank of America, American Express, Coca-Cola, Chevron, Occidental Petroleum, Kraft Heinz, Moody Corp, and Chubb Limited is already here quite high at just over 2% of the portfolio. I honestly still have no clue what they see in SiriusXM, in this case also Liberty SiriusXM. I, I don't know why they've been adding to those companies quite heavily in the last couple of quarters. I would love to know why, but I don't know. If you know, let me know down in the comment section below. We've got Amazon here as well at 0.54% of the overall portfolio. New Holdings still here at 0.39%. I'm actually very surprised that they didn't add to Amazon or new for, for the last couple of quarters. I mean, if you already have those in your portfolio, but it's still a tiny position, I know, tiny position, but overall quite a lot of money. I know, I know, but still, why not add to those types of companies instead of adding to those ridiculous Liberty Series XM? I don't know. They're quite, quite strange in my opinion. Overall, he gets the majority of the money from Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, American Express, and all of those dividend paying companies. I mean, that's quite some cash flow. So that will it for this video. Of course, do share your, let's say, surprises or not surprises in the comment section below. As you can see, some of these super investors are quite bullish on Chinese stocks. Maybe that's because in America, some of these stocks have become a bit too expensive, have reached all time highs. And so they're looking for some alpha elsewhere. Could be, let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.